Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well in your life. And today we are going to discuss one of the most important hormone of the endocrine system that is cortisol. And we also know that cortisol is uh, known regarding two another disease conditions that is Addison disease and Cushing syndrome which we will discuss later on in the end of this lecture. So let's begin our journey with first of all hypothalamus. As we know that hypothalamus is the chairman of the endocrine society and it is having paraventricular nucleus in it. Paraventricular nucleus which gets stimulated with some factors i will tell you these factors uh, on the during the lecture period but uh, uh, please trust me that uh, we will discuss them later on now as the paraventricular uh, nucleus is stimulated it is releasing the hormone crh or the corticotropin releasing hormone the corticotropin releasing hormone is released by the paraventricular nucleus which stimulate the anterior pituitary gland anterior pituitary gland to secrete adrenocorticotropic hormone adrenocorticotropic hormone ladies and gentlemen adrenocorticotropic hormone is very important for our survival Adrenocorticotropic hormone is secreted by anterior pituitary gland and uh, via blood, via blood it reaches up to the adrenal gland and in the adrenal gland we had already discussed about the uh, about its three layers that is GFR GFR are its layer zona glomerulus zona fasciculata and zona reticularis and my dear students the hormone cortis uh, hormone uh, ACTH act on the this red zone second zone second zone known as zona fasciculata to release uh, the hormone cortisol okay now we had taken this cell out we had taken this cell out in order to explain what is going on inside the that is the cells of the adrenal gland or zona fasciculata as soon as ACTH bind on the receptor it stimulate the G stimulatory process or G stimulatory proteins further the adenyl cyclase enzyme is activated we already know about this process then cyclic AMP is formed which will make protein kinase A enzyme which will make protein kinase A enzyme in the cell of the adrenal gland in the zona fasciculata layer all right now as we know that our cortisol cortisol is not a peptide hormone it is a we can say glucocorticoid hormone glucocorticoid hormone which is prepared from the cholesterol which is prepared from cholesterol and after the dietary cholesterol intake it is converted into we can say pre, uh, pre, pre nanolon pre nanolon then pre nanolon is converted into 17 hydroxy progesterone it is converted into 17 uh, hydroxy progesterone and this 17 hydroxy progesterone is then converted into 11 hydroxy cortisol under the influence of very 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 important horm uh, enzyme that is 21 hydroxylase 21 hydroxylase why i am saying this is very very important because Many medications alter the mechanism of this enzyme. 21 hydroxylase enzyme, uh, which is going to make uh, 11 hydrocortisol, hydroxycortisol, which is further converted into cortisol. Now, what is the PKA or protein kinase A doing here? The PKA or protein kinase A is going to in a phosphylate or influence many enzymatic activities many enzymatic activities especially 21 hydroxylase 
specially 21 hydroxylase to enhance the production of cortisol all right done we had prepared cortisol in the cell of the adrenal gland in the zona fasciculata all right now this cortisol hormone will come into blood now this cortisol hormone will come into blood and in the blood it is not uh, we can say uh, uh, carried out by the blood freely in the free form but it has to bind with some proteins such as albumin protein albumin protein and 25% of the cortisol bind with albumin whereas 75% of the cortisol is bound with transcotton please note this or highlight this uh, protein transcotton all right or globulin transcotton after that it is carried to different parts of the body after that cortisol is carried to different parts of the body so let's begin with our muscles our muscles are having we can say receptors for the cortisol hormone and as soon as cortisol bind over here it stimulate the nuclear machinery of the muscle cell or the myocyte which make new mrna proteins under the influence of hormone activity new mrna proteins are known as proteases are known as proteases you know what what are proteases these are cutter enzymes these are cutter enzymes which will cut the uh, proteins present in the muscle cells and these uh, i mean uh, these proteins are then converted into amino acids amino acids are being made along with along with muscles are also making lactic acid clear everybody clear so far anybody having any doubt please ask in the comment section till now lactic acid along with uh, we can say amino acids are being made and these are kept over here by us similarly the cortisol hormone similarly meanwhile on the other hand cortisol hormone also has receptors for on the adipose cells or adipose tissue cortisol bind on the adipose membrane and uh, stimulate the nuclear machinery to make similar cutter enzyme these kind of seizer enzymes or cutter enzymes known as proteases which cut down the triglycerides tga triglycerides into glycerol and free fatty acid and free fatty acids all right all right free fatty acids now this glycerol and lactic acid please listen with your both ears the this glycerol with lactic acid and amino acids come inside the liver come and reach in the liver and under the influence of hormone cortisol you know what liver has also receptors for cortisol hepatocytes are also having receptors for hormone cortisol clear all right as soon as the hormone cortisol bind on the hepatocyte membrane for example this is a hepatic lobule or we can say hexagonal hepatocyte it is having receptor for the cortisol and as soon as the cortisol bind on the receptor on the receptor of the hepatocyte it stimulate a formation of we can say glucose formation of glucose from the new sources what are the new sources new sources are glycerol new sources are glycerol and amino acids and lactic acid and some type of we can say odd fatty acids or lactic acid all right so what is this process known as when our liver make glucose from the new sources non carbohydrate sources it is known as gluco 
नियो नियो मीन्स न्यू जेनेसिस ग्लूको नियो जेनेसिस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इज फॉर्म्ड ग्लूकोज इट इज क्वाइट ऑबियस दैट कॉटिसोल इज रिलीज बाय द अड्रीनल ग्लैंड वेन देर इज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया वेन देर इज हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया और वी कैन से दैट हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया इज ए वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग स्टिमुलेटर हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया इज ए वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग स्टिमुलेटर फॉर द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ कॉटिसोल ऑल राइट सिमिलरली सिमिलरली ग्लूको कॉटिसोल हैज अनदर रोल कॉटिसोल कैन टेक ग्लूकोस मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड मेक देयर पॉलीमर एंड मेक देयर पॉलीमर चेंज टू मेक ग्लाइकोजन टू मेक ग्लाइकोजन वेन एवर ग्लाइकोजन इज मेड इन द बॉडी वेन एवर ग्लाइकोजन इज मेड इन द बॉडी दिस प्रोसेस इज नोन एज ग्लाइकोजेनेसिस ग्लाइकोजेनेसिस सो वाई अवर हॉर्मोन कॉटिसोल इज स्टोरिंग ग्लूकोज फॉर फ्यूचर यूज इन केस ऑफ हाइपोग्लाइसीमिया and for converting of uh, amino acids lactic acid and glycerol into glucose and then again storing it and then again storing it so kindly note that cortisol has cortisol has direct influence to make glycogen cortisol has direct influence to make uh, we can say glycogen under the process glycogenesis and gluconeogenesis we had already discussed all right anybody having any doubt till now please feel free to ask in the comment section similarly on the other hand there is another game going on what is the game we know that blood vessels are having three layers tunica adventitia tunica media tunica intima and in the tunica media we are having smooth muscles and smooth muscles have receptors for norepinephrine norepinephrine or adrenergic receptors these are adrenergic receptors similarly meanwhile the uh, tunica media is having smooth muscles which are having nor adrenergic receptors which is uh, uh, which is binding with nor epinephrine which is binding with nor epinephrine you know what our hormone cortisol is very clever he is going to amplify he is going to boost he is going to increase the sensitivity he is going to increase the sensitivity of the these receptors of adrenergic receptors and what is going to happen what is going to happen smooth muscle constriction it will cause yes please it will cause vasoconstriction wow wow vasoconstriction bp will increase bp will increase along with increase in total peripheral resistance total peripheral resistance my dear students till now we had seen so much about cortisol its effect on the muscle cells adipocytes liver hepatocytes and now our blood vessels similarly there is a weird mechanism or we can say there is opposite mechanism you know under the fight and flight mechanism or under the stress regarding our daily life activities mental processes metabolism and injuries trauma surgeries so many uh, we can say stress fact uh, stress events are going in the body inflammation process are going in the body so there uh, is present our we can say nervous system on the hepatocytes also our nervous system or adrenergic receptors are also present in the hepatocytes hepatocytes are having adrenergic receptors and 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 cortisol is going to increase amplify sensitivity of these receptors also to get the effect what is the effect it is glycogenolysis or we can say glycolysis it is glycolysis 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 
and this glucagon this glyco glycogen this um, uh, all this uh, uh, material that was stored glycogen is broken down to get what is to get glucose during fight and flight mechanism during exercise trauma surgery this cortisol hormone can increase boost nor adrenergic activity on the hepatocyte and to in order to get glucose released in the blood first it stored the glucose in the glycogen then it break down the glycogen into the glucose in the glucose it works in contrast with insulin it works in contrast with the insulin hormone all right till now we had seen so much about the uh, hormone cortisol and we also know that what are the positive or stimulants for the cortisol first is hypoglycemia second is trauma surgery inflammation process okay and what are the inhibitors inhibitors will be hyperglycemia inhibitors will be hyperglycemia obvious clear anybody having any doubt in the end our these soldiers or immune system is left and cortisol is going to inhibit cortisol is going to inhibit or decrease our immune cells functioning and what are these functionings for example basophils 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 do what basophils release prostaglandin and histamine right prostaglandins and histamine similarly monocytes and lymphocytes monocytes as we know release interleukin 1 and cytokines interleukins and cytokines these are also released by this guy lymphocytes all right so decrease in these anti-inflammatory substances will will decrease inflammation process will increase or uh, sorry decrease inflammation process and our immune system will be altered therefore microbial activity will increase similarly we can say during stress during stress cortisol is increased and the immune system is compromised therefore we are having infections we are having infection you know during your examination preparation lot of students are having uh, problems with their immune system due to stress more the syllabus more the stress less the percentage more the stress more the failure in the examination more the stress what we will tell our parents uh, what we will tell our society etc etc so this is going to cause infections or poor immune system in the last we will discuss before we advance to the Addison disease and Cushing syndrome we will discuss about the that is normal range of the uh, cortisol hormone it is in the we can say microgram per deciliter microgram per deciliter and its normal value is 5 to 25 microgram per deciliter in 100 ml there is 5 to 25 uh, mg microgram of the uh, cortisol hormone present and when we talk about the regulation of the cortisol hormone the as the blood level of cortisol increases it will have negative feedback system to the uh, we can say our hypothalamus that kindly inhibit this process and as soon as cortisol hormone level decreases it will provide positive feedback to the our hypothalamus to increase its production in the last i will uh, also like to tell you something extra that during our uh, pregnancy period in the human pregnancy the especially during the 30th and 32nd 30th and 32nd week of pregnancy this cortisol hormone stimulate the lungs to release surfactant which increase lung maturity which increase lung maturity so this is all about the cortisol hormone now our lecture will shift towards the addison disease and cushing syndrome
सो आई होप दैट दिस वीडियो माइट हैड प्रोवाइडेड यू मैक्सिमम नॉलेज इन द मिनिमम टाइम इफ यू लाइक दिस वीडियो प्लीज डोंट फॉरगेट टू प्रेस द लाइक बटन एंड सब्सक्राइब बटन थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग दिस वीडियो